Oh man, I was addicted to Madden. I definitely would try to take stuff I was doing playing Madden onto the field. He's at the 40 yard line and only the punter to beat. Touchdown by the human joystick. I definitely had that video game quality as a player. That's why the human joysticks made so much sense. It was like I was doing video game moves. Dante Hall went right, left, forward, backwards, and then made every Bronco miss. The human joystick fits me completely. Dante Hall is headed for the house. A 99 speed? I took the starting receiver out and I made myself a starter. Tony Gonzalez never saw the ball. You kidding me? pre on? We give you about seven carries. We're going to get this kid 82 Dante Hall. We're going to give him a lot of touches. Touchdown, Kansas City. Touchdown, Dante Hall. At midfield, giving ground, and down he goes. Yeah, so I had a coach by the name of Gunther Cunningham. This guy had me ready to quit football my rookie year. The money wasn't worth it. The hits wasn't worth it. The ball ends up uh, giving up five yards on the play. I wasn't doing the proper things off the field that it took to be successful. I was a knucklehead. I literally, no lie, was thinking like, okay, what job can I go get? Because this football thing is just not going to work. And then Nostradamus Vermeil was coming. Let's go play football. It was Coach Ramil's decision as far as uh, having the vision to convert me to a wide receiver. I had never played wide receiver in my life. And to be honest, when he first told me he was sending me to NFL Europe to become a wide out, I thought that was his, you know, subtle way of saying, you're not going to be on this team next year. I almost told him, no, I'm not going to Scotland. Are you kidding me? I'm not going overseas to Scotland. But my mom talked me into it, and it was the best experience in my life. I started to gain a little of my confidence back. When I started doing the proper things like getting rest, eating the proper diet, all of those things to me is what switched and allowed me to fulfill my potential as an all-pro retirement. This is football country in Kansas City and the Chiefs and the Arizona Cardinals are coming up next. So it's week 13. 2002, my third year in the league. I've yet to take it to the crib as a return man. Low snap. Player gets it away. Good high punt. Even though my confidence was slowly coming back, I really hadn't reached maximum confidence. So if you look at that first return, it was nothing human joystick about it. It was simply take it where it's supposed to go. I didn't make anybody miss. That was all on the coach, all on the blocking. Dante Hall at the 10. Finds a lane up the middle. Paul may go. He is gone. I was just ecstatic on that first touchdown. I'm high-fiving guys before I even got to the end zone. Like, I was just so happy. It took three years to, to get it to the paint. And then I immediately took off to Coach Ramil, seeked him out, and gave him the biggest hug because I knew his patience, his, his belief in me allowed for that to finally culminate, and, and I finally put it in the end zone. The first ever for Dante Hall, a 90-yard punt return. Week 14, the Rams came, and believe it or not, the confidence is probably at this point 75%. And then early in that game, again, did nothing special. It's picked up by Hall at the 12. It's a full yes. head of steam and gets to the outside. The field was so wide open to the left. Nothing but green grass, no defenders whatsoever. On the return, Dante Hall. He breaks out into the open. Trying to beat Jeff Wilkins. Dante Hall is going all the way. It was easy. It was really, really easy. Two weeks in a row, Dante Hall. His first kickoff return for a touchdown. That was the second time in a short span that I had took it to the house. And at that point is when the confidence went from 75 to about 95. Now I'm feeling real good about myself. I'm about to start freestyling now. Dante Hall backs up to the 14. Hall spins away from one and another and finds the lane. That was the point in which the human joystick was born. He might do it. He's just got the kicker to beat. It's a foot race at the 25. Touchdown by the human joystick. I started making guys miss. I started taking it where it wasn't designed to go. I mean, I'm running like this. I'm, I done broke all sorts of ball handling rules. Now we're just playing football. Oh, is this man putting on a show? 
86-yard return. And Dick Vermeil is just loving this. You can see it. You can see from my first return to the second return to that particular return, oh, the human joystick just popped out. And look at this. Dick Vermeil believed in him, and Hall is paying him back with touchdowns. I'm not sure exactly when it was coined, but I know exactly who it was. It was the Chiefs play-by-play, -play, Mitch Holtis. Touchdown, Kansas City! Because I had kind of, later on, came up with the X Factor. X Factor coming at you. I remember he was like, the human joystick does it again. And from there, we print t-shirts and we pounded on that. Those nicknames, it's kind of like your kids. I don't prefer either one. I think they both fit, but I love them the same. Next week against the Broncos, Confidence went from 75, 95, to 175. Green double bump wide open as Dante Hall. 40, cuts back at the 30. One man to beat. Still on his feet at the 20. Dante Hall, touchdown! And what a turnabout! The Chiefs offensive coordinator, Al Saunders, started implementing me more into the offense. Longest touchdown pass of the season for Trent Green as he goes 75 big ones to the scatty wide receiver Dante Hall. And if you go look at the second touchdown, which is my favorite all-time play, no kick return, people love the Denver return and all that, that play particular, I was lined up in the slot. I saw the defense, I knew the cornerback Delta O'Neill was gonna be sitting out there waiting, and I knew where Trent was gonna come, I knew. And then the throw underneath the Hall. Now, if you look at the spin move on that particular play, the spin move saved my career because I'm trying to spin and get rid of Delta, but I see Al Wilson coming with bad intentions. Instincts just took over. It was only one way to go. One way. Back. So when I jump back, Al takes Delta out. So he's on the ground, Al is on the ground, and I had just enough room to take it up the sideline. Oh, boy, look at him. Like a cat. Look now he's in the clear. Oh, no, it's in the what a brilliant play again! That play particular is hands down my favorite, not only because aesthetically it was dope. Flying X, whatever that means. But because at that point, it was like, I can play offense too. That reminded me of Barry Sanders, that stop, start, jump left, jump right, cat quickness of Dante Hall. That's almost inhuman. First time I watched that playback was when I got home that night. I heard my man Stuart Scott you know, big me up on SportsCenter that night. And it was like, wow, I've arrived. They don't want Hall to catch any of these kicks. They'll kick away from him whenever possible. My process goes like this. I'm walking onto the field. I'm checking out the fans. I'm looking up in the stands to see what the vibe is like. I'm basically soaking in the atmosphere. John T. Hall, who leads the NFL in kickoff returns, awaits the boot. When you're in the zone, you kind of blank out and everything, just your natural abilities, all your practice habits, that takes over. Here comes the speed merchant, Dante Hall. And then from there, every great returner at least has to make two or three guys miss. He finds a seam, he's got skills to block the kicker to beat, he tried to trip him and there he goes. Now if you make two or three guys miss, oh, you can throw up the X, you can, you know, you can high step like Dion. You know he's got a high step because you had something to do with that. And Dante Hall has returned his fourth kick for a touchdown. Now it's week three in Houston, my hometown. And Dante Hall, he the author of a 100 yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week. You already know, I'm trying to show out. I got 50 families and friend members there in the stand. They done cost me about 10 grand worth of tickets. Oh, I got to do something at the crib. We got to get busy at home in front of the folks. And he's brought down by Jonathan Wells, a reserve running back, a return of 23 yards. The game was kind of going along. We were winning, but I really hadn't did a lot. Chad Stanley to punt. Dante Hall. And that particular punt came, I remember, it was a one hopper. And we had a rule. If you don't catch it on the first hop, you got to wave it off. And he's going to wave this off and let it bounce. But it was just coming right at me. I know I should probably wave it off, get away from it. F it. <laughs> Make a play. And he picks it up on the fly. He waved it off, but he did not signal a fair catch. And there he goes flying on the other side. He's got an escort. He gets by the quicker. 
had already thought about my celebration, right? I did uh, the Priest Holmes. I tried to do the Tony jump over the goalpost, but when you're 5'8", bro, it's hard to get up with 12 pounds of equipment. So I just kind of did a basketball through the legs move, and then I threw up the X. He was born in Houston, Texas. He's playing back home, and he may have just put this one on ice for the Kansas City Chiefs. After that, I remember, you know, doing this to the stands like, Mama, I got you a game ball. I got you one. A spectacular afternoon for two first-class ball clubs, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Baltimore Ravens. Week four against Baltimore. The real difference maker in the last couple weeks for the Chiefs has been Dante Hall and the kick returns. And the Baltimore Ravens fan base were some of the most, man. I mean, you could just hear him when you sat on the bench. It felt like a, a, a gladiator type atmosphere in that stadium. And I just remember, man, this, this is like a dog fight in here. It's Jamal Lewis, and he flies into the end zone for a touchdown. They just smashed it right down Kansas City's throat. You knew that the game was basically, you know, coming down to one or two more possessions max. And we are tied, and this is the first time this season the Chiefs have been involved in a tight ball game. It was the perfect time for the special teams to make a play. And it was like, this is our moment. Wayne Richie to kick off. They got Blaylock and Hall deep back and the number one kickoff return man in the NFL from the five. And they stuffed us on the ensuing kickoff. And down he goes, Will Demps corrals him. I mean, stuffed us, I think, inside the 20. But ah, uh, they made a mistake. Penalty on the play, and it was on Baltimore. They'll re-kick it. They were offsides and had to kick it again, and that was a death sentence. If I'm Dante Hall, I've got my single golden opportunity right here for a return. We said, okay, we see what they're doing. We're going to set them one way, and then we're going to break it left. And then what did we break? Four-yard line for Dante Hall. Finds a seam. Gets by the kicker, and there he goes! This is unbelievable! To the house, see you. 97 yard kickoff return, and the Chiefs are back on top. Just look at how I spiked that ball. I, I wound it up because they had been talking ish all game long. So to finally be able to, like, shut up, sit down, game over. And then I threw the X up. I'm gonna threw my damn shoulder out when I threw the X up on that particular return. Six return touchdowns in the last nine games historic stretch that the NFL probably has never seen before. One of the best games, best returns, best atmospheres that I've ever been a part of. And this is only week five? John Hall, three-time AFC Special Teams Player of the Week. Typically, when you're fielding a punt from midfield, heels on the 10, don't back up. Well, my heels were on the 10, <laughs> but I backed up. Dante Hall backing up to the eight-yard line. And I knew, okay, I done already screwed up now. Now I got to get myself out of this situation. Makes the first man miss, looking to try to get Good to the luck. outside. I saw nothing but Broncos at that point. I said, okay, let me try to take it right. Nothing's there. You know why there's nothing there? Because I shouldn't have caught it. Nobody is thinking to block. He's in trouble, surrounded. So I take it back towards my end zone, and then, oh, you got to get busy now. You got to get busy. Dancing. Middlebrooks can't get him. Look, he's all, uh oh, now he's back inside the five that finds a seam. Once I actually broke and hit daylight, because it's like, oh, I'm out of here, I'm gone. He's got the kicker to beat, and that's Nor. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching something that has never happened before in the National Football League. Seven returns for a touchdown in 10 games. Incredible. I wasn't a big history buff at that time. So I had no idea that I had tied the record. I was happy to finally be a part of a winning NFL team because it's the first time I had experienced that. And that ties Dante Hall with a host of others of four return touchdowns in a single season, and we're in week five. It should have been five in a row. If you go and look at the Green Bay Packers game, we were killing it that week as well. 20, 30, he's got a chance. And the kicker tripped him up. The kicker did not tackle me. No, no, no. He was gone if it wasn't for Bidwell. I didn't have the proper cleats on, and I actually tripped on the grass. 
as a kicker reached out. So it looks like the kicker tripped me up. I was already stumbling, bro. No kicker tackle me. Knock it off. So the, the last return I had that particular season is one of my favorites. And the reason this one is so high for me, obviously, it's in the playoffs. Peyton Manning and the coach came in and was handing it to us in Arrowhead. The fake to Rhodes. Manning down the middle to Stokely. Touchdown. That was a game nobody punted. Touchdown. And on that particular play, I remember being able to finally get it, have enough room to set it up. All right, Dante! Return ball. Dante Hall wants to get it back in a hurry. He's going left side. It wasn't a lot of room, but once I cut it up inside, I remember only seeing a wall of my blocker. Dante Hall. What's his name? Vendor Jack? Vendor? Yeah, Vendor Jack. Stood no chance. Are you kidding me? Cuts back. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Kansas City! 93-yard kickoff return by the human joystick! That was probably the loudest I had ever heard out here. They had the cowbell ding, 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 ding. The fans were going crazy. <laughs> in the playoffs where you really make your hay. One of my all-time favorite returns. 67-year-old Vermeil, <laughs> like everyone else here, became a kid during that return. Coach Vermeil said something to me that he believed that I was the best kick returner he had ever coached. I felt like I had rewarded him for sticking his neck out on the line when nobody else, you know, believed in me the way he did. I love you. Uh -huh. Forever, huh? yeah, yeah. forever, yeah. right? Yeah. Here we are 10, 15 years later, and people still remember some of the things that I, I was able to accomplish. When I hear people say, oh, what's the X factor for this particular game? X factor coming at you. I guarantee you no one was saying that prior to 2003. Touchdown, Kansas City, with the best returner in the National Football League.